In this video, we examine the ideal solubility of a solute in a solvent from a thermodynamic perspective. Now, uh, this is not truly a colligative property of a solution because what we're going to see is that uh, the ideal solubility of a solute depends on the nature of the solute. However, much of the thermodynamic analysis is very similar to what we have seen for changes in the boiling point and freezing point in solutions upon adding the solute. So that's why we study this ideal solubility of a solid solute in a uh, 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 solution uh, from a thermodynamic perspective. All right, so here's the, the system. You're going to have now a solution of A, which will be your solvent, and then it also has B. Now, but this solution is saturated in the solute B. That means that you have so much that you can't dissolve anymore. And when that happens, what actually you expect to find is that solid B is at the bottom, right? So this will be solid B. And again, this happens for any uh, saturated uh, solution. Now, the question then is, is well, how do, uh, can we uh, detect the solubility, right? Or, or how can we relate the solubility of, uh, this, of this B in that uh, solution as a function of temperature? Well, so again, we're going to use here thermodynamics to examine that. Notice that in this case, what we can do is uh, um, establish a comparison between the Gibbs energies of the solution phase for the solute and the solid phase, uh, which is pure so for pure solute. As a matter of fact, if we're at equilibrium, Right, what should happen is that the chemical potential of uh, your solute B in the solid right, has to be identical to the chemical potential of solute B in the liquid at equilibrium. Okay, so uh, the solute is um, uh, pure uh, in the solid phase, right? So we can add here a star to the note that that is a pure solid. There's no solvent. Uh, that is right here in the solid phase. Okay, it's so a pure solute, and again, that happens when you have a saturated solution. Now, in the liquid phase, you have a mixture of A and B, right? So, if this is an ideal uh, solution, then we can write this simply as follows RT natural log of the mole fraction of B. All right, so now we can set a, a solve for the mole fraction of uh, B, right, and then set up the equation. So, that is simply going to be equal to the change in chemical potential from uh, the liquid phase to the solid phase. Okay, so if a solid minus liquid divided over RT. Okay, but when you think about what you have there in the numerator, that is simply uh, uh, the change uh, in the chemical potential as you go from the liquid to the solid, which would be freezing, or the negative fusion, right? Because fusion is going from the solid to the liquid. So really, really this is the reverse of fusion. Uh, we, we can then write it simply as follows. Natural log of the mole fraction of B, right, in solution, that is going to be equal to the minus change in Gibbs energy uh, of fusion for uh, that sol uh, solute B. Okay, more Gibbs energy of B in fusion, which is going from the solid to the liquid, divided by RT. Now, our thermodynamic analysis then requ requires us to examine the first derivatives of this expression with respect to temperature, because we want to see how the solubility changes with temperature, and that is something that uh, we can do readily by simply taking first derivatives, okay, with respect to T. And on the right-hand side, we'll have here a minus then the first derivative with respect to T of the Gibbs energy of fusion per mole for solute B over RT. All right, so now we're going to use here tricks that we have used in uh, our prior video when we were trying to derive uh, the boiling point elevation and freezing point depression. The first one is to recognize that this 1 over R is just a factor, so you can uh, factor it out. So we can write this as minus 1 over R. And the other thing that you can rec recognize here is that uh, this is now the Gibbs-Helmholtz equation, and we know what the answer to that is. 
right? So that is going to be minus 1 over r. And then the Gibbs Hopkins equation tells you that this is equal to minus the enthalpy of fusion for that solute B divided over T squared. Okay, so uh, these two negative signs cancel each other out, and uh, that is the expression that you have. Now we simply integrate this and uh, we'll be finished, right? So let me see if I can uh, perhaps integrate that there. Right, so let's see. All right, so I separate the uh, terms. That means that on the left-hand side, I'm just going to have the natural log of the mole fraction of B, and on the right-hand side, I'm going to have this integral. So that is going to be the integral of differential, the natural log of the mole fraction of B, and on the right-hand side, I'm going to have the integral of uh, 1 over R, and the enthalpy of fusion of that pure solute B, divided over t squared, differential of t. Right, so let's examine the limits of the integral here. Okay, so, uh, well, uh, we can say that uh, in the solid, then uh, the mole fraction of b is 1, which means that the natural log of the mole fraction is 0. And then we, we want to uh, see what is the concentration of the mole fraction of b in solution at some temperature t. So the end of the integral is whatever the solubility is, Okay, and then uh, here we'll have that um, that will be just a freezing point, right? Uh, that's uh, the temperature of uh, at which this uh, solid uh, will have the phase transition will be the freezing point, and this is just the temperature of uh, the solution. All right, so this is fairly straightforward to integrate. That is simply going to be natural log of x sub b. And on the right-hand side, uh, notice that we can factor this out of the integral. Right, this is going to be that, that's going to be a constant, and we simply have to take the integral of differential of t over t squared and evaluate it from the freezing point to uh, the temperature of a solution. Right, so all of this just simply turns into minus the change in enthalpy and fusion for the pure solute divided over r, 1 over the temperature of a solution minus 1 over tf which is the freezing point. All right, so this is your final expression. We're not going to manipulate this any further. We want to just to showcase that uh, using thermodynamics or the thermodynamics of ideal mixtures, you can calculate the ideal solubility of a solute in a solution, right? So that ideal solubility, which is this, uh, is this is cast in terms of mole fraction of B, so it would be more convenient to, again, reformulate it in terms of molarity or molality or things like that. But for us, this is going to be enough. Right, so that is a measure of the solubility of B in the solution. Actually, it depends uh, on the freezing point of the solute and on the uh, enthalpy of the phase transition uh, from, from the solid to the liquid for the solute. Okay, so uh, this notice that there's a lot of analogies between what we've done here and the analysis that we've done about the freezing points and boiling points for a solvent when you added a little bit of solute to it. Okay, and that's why we're using here ideal solubility uh, in, this, in this part of the material, even though this is not really a colligative property.